Hello and welcome, beautiful people, to the Inner Temple. It is your host with the most, Mr. Mark David Meyer, with the fire, here to share ideas and take the collective vibration higher. My sole intention is to reconcile all paradox with love and truth. I love you. Today's episode of Mars Day with Mark, number 37, is a special one. Faceless, in the spirit of Pisces. And your boy is feeling a little bit ru- worse than worse for wear. Feeling rough? Is that how they say it? Dude, when we hit that quarter moon, <laughs> I got hit with like the sick truck. And I'm always well in the mind, body, and soul, but I really believe that in this instance, my spirit really wanted me to sit the fuck down and just rest. Manifested illness to sleep, really, just to put everything down. You know, and I love my work. I enjoy what I'm doing, but it's like the fact that this is work still. It's like I got to put that shit down sometimes, too. So if you can hear it in my voice, I'm giving you guys my best. But it's been a bit of rest and it's been a bit of recovery. So I want to put you all on game and do it this way today because... We like to change things up. We like to move things around, see how we can experiment and do things differently. And what I wanted to give my friends today was a interactive walk through the solar system. And we can do that. And I encourage you to really open your mind and heart to the planets and the stars and really go beyond in this video and just use your imagination because I'm given the gift. And if you do your part, meet me in this part, you'll be able to really see some divine order and let's get to it so the important thing you need to really note is that the sun is in pisces right now this chart is diagramming the celestial sphere from earth's perspective and we sit roughly here in the middle where that red opposition sign is if you need information about how to read the chart Go to my profile and listen to Simplified Astrology Volume 1 because I'd want to save a lot of the um, jargon and rudimentary stuff. If you need to catch up to speed, make sure you get that book. It's absolutely free. So from Earth's perspective, the sun is in Pisces. Don't stare at the sun. But if you were to look beyond the sun right now, you would see that Pisces is basically behind the sun. So what that kind of means is the sun is shooting Pisces energy at the earth. Oh, fuck. (laughs) Oh, man, that's crazy. Getting fished out here, man. So so that's awesome. What does that mean? I mean, it means a lot of things, but every type of energy that Pisces is uh, meant to display, people are going to feel that in their sun. Oh, yeah, you got a sun, too, by the way. When you look at your chart, there's a sun in there. You know, that's going to reflect your self, your personality, your ego, your character. So, basically, the things you need to know about Pisces, it's dual, it's a mutable sign. There's two fish, basically. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. There's two fish, and it's a water sign. So, the Pisces sign, and it's the last sign, too. All those qualities kind of point to the fact that this is ethereal, it's mystical, it's deep, it's otherworldly, it's... um. Like, imagine something that doesn't exist. Like, there you go. That's Pisces. <laughs> yeah, take you right there. Like, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's that space beyond space, the great unknown. Pisces is a gift. And we all have access to these energies, you should know. And when you look at your own natal chart, you'll find every sign placed in there as well. And, you know, these are archetypes. The zodiac belt is really showing how consciousness evolves in totality and when it comes to the last sign and think about the circle really quick the belt is a circle so like there's no beginning or end to this shit but if they were to be an end when you correlate a beginning from aries pisces makes the end by saying this is disillusion letting go dissolving transcending that's the whole fucking point that's where it ends bruh 
or you go back to Aries, which is one or 13, whichever way you look at it. But, you know, Pisces is going to be. I mean, I could just leave it at that. I don't got to say anything because that really illustrates it quite well. But, you know, your beliefs and your dreams is the most Piscean thing. What are you imagining? Whether you think you are or not, trust me, you're imagining all day, every day. All day, every day. So if you only take one thing from this video, please remember you're imagining all day, every day. So be conscious with your imagination because that's the power of creation. I think I should stop the video right now because the rest might just distract you guys because that's the fucking message that'll take you from the sun to Saturn. If you really want to create your dreams, you really want to possess the things that you desire, you need to be able to see it in your mind before you ever hold it in your hand. For real. And visualization starts the process of manifestation. So when you can see something that you wish to attain, you will immediately start to attract it through the law of vibration. So when you do hold a visualization, you are setting an intention to the universe or signaling to the universe to correspond with your intention. So this is the tricky part with the law of attraction is that you really just have to maintain the frequency long enough for it to crystallize physically. And not give the fuck up. And if y'all see this, man, you've got the gold, you've got the blueprint, you've got the key. You just have to be willing to hold on to your dreams with firm belief and conviction and feel positive long enough for you to manifest. And that just means your will has to be stronger than your doubt. Your will has to be stronger than fear. Your convictions have to be stronger than doubt, blame, fear, or justification of your failures. Belief is imperative, my friends, but I just want to illustrate once again, you know, it does take action. It starts with the visualization, but you have to take action. If you are really willing, you'll just do it. You'll have it. There's nothing... That you can't do within reason. I don't even like adding those last two words, but at the same time, I, I, it's the skeptic in me that just says, I mean, hypothetically, you could do anything, but within reason, you get a lot more. I don't want to say a lot more, but you can easily refocus on the practical implications of that. But I digress. So let's talk about. What to expect for the Pisces month. Because we're going to take it week to week like we always do, my friends. But what I just wanted to illustrate, because I don't think I really said it uh, properly. <laughs> in other words, I feel like I beat around the bush and the bush is still hissing. It's like, I'm trying to beat this snake to death. There's a snake in my bush, bro. The point is, man, um, limiting beliefs. Like assumptions about life, assumptions about self that inhibit, restrict, or limit one's being or manifestation of desires. Like the most, and I feel it in my teeth, bro. Like my ancestors reminded me, like, it's the unworthiness that hits most people. Myself included, man. I'm a fucking human. Unworthiness. There's a high percentage that you point to any person on the planet, they might have a, a bit of that feeling in their blood. For real. And this is a, a feeling that truly can contradict a lot of people's pursuit of their passion or success or love or a lot of other things, man. So, the sun conversation we're having real quick because I want to remind you this is all about the sun right now is that you choose how you get to see yourself you literally choose how to identify yourself yes the world will label you yes the world will call out to you give you names and labels and harassment sometimes oh yeah <laughs> believe me man but uh you choose you choose how to respond. The 
there was a Wayne Dyer seminar, and he's a great man. I really encourage you guys. If you're looking for some a soulful dude, and someone should run his chart. Shit, I should run his chart. I bet he's got some strong Pisces. We need to research that, man. Someone in the comments let me know what's up with Wayne Dyer's Pisces placements. But he mentions... Damn, what the fuck did he mention? Why did I bring that up? <laughs> oh, spirit, help me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dwayne Dyer, thanks. Wayne Dyer had mentioned that, um, you know, it's all about what's inside of you, basically. And, you know, someone can call out to you and go, hey, stupid, from behind your back. And if you turn around, you'd be like, how did they know? that I was stupidest, like, you basically have to, um, subscribe, consent to energetic exchange a lot of times, too, so, and a powerful point I took from that, just to make it worth mentioning, because I feel like that was powerful in and of itself, but he also mentions that just like an orange getting squeezed, you know, you can only leak out what's inside of you. So when it comes to the world putting pressure on you, when it comes to others harming you, pushing against you, triggering you, upsetting you, you know, the world can really only draw out from you what's already inside of you. So Pisces gives us this opportunity to really glimpse at ourselves from above and beyond. And to look at ourselves from a higher order of things. And from this perspective, we can gain true insight of our true nature and live in true harmony. And that's beautiful. I mean, and the crazy thing about truth, once again, is that's just one version of it. But the point is alignment. You know, and then I'm also told to say that con contrary, that without a conscious awareness of this energy, actions taken during Pisces can be a lot more mystifying across the board. But amplification being neutral, but if you aren't paying attention to what you're doing, you might not be amplifying exactly what you want. And we can just leave it at that. So this narrative hardly changes. I don't think it ever will when it comes to me, who I am, what I represent, my family, my message, my ministry. Be intentional with everything in the realm of your control. And your intentions are very likely to manifest. Unconditional love and exemplary will is really the guidelines for success and significance. But ultimately, you have to have some framework to judge yourself on, or else you're just going to feel like you're swimming in the ocean with no flotation devices and shit. So mind mapping is the phrase that comes to my mind and I want to say that astrology in a psychological tense kind of doing this already so let's move one month ahead this is where we go into Aries season so I wanted to just show you guys that um, not too much is happening in the grand scheme of things still got Pluto and Aquarius we've got Jupiter ingressing further into Taurus moving close to Uranus we've got Chiron breaking over the node, you've got the sun going into Aries, and you've got Venus crossing over Saturn. Apart from that, really nothing else is changing. Let's move back to the week at hand. So this month is really about swimming in the deep, and we'll talk about the intermediate uh, transitory aspects as we go, so let's just talk about the highlights of this week because... Yeah, once again, it's a Pisces sun week. I want you to know that Jupiter is the focus. This is really the important thing when it comes to this discussion and this conversation we're having is that take it from a Jupiter Pisces person. These are my credentials <laughs> that, uh, you know, when it comes to this energy, it is really what you make of it. And without 
a form of offering, without a form of sacrifice, without a form of giving, the Pisces energy is unlikely to reciprocate or amount to anything for you you personally. That is just what I, I believe to be true. That's just what I've seen in my experience when it comes to whatever the fuck we want to call the beyond, the great unknown. And it's like, don't get me wrong, man. There There is a, a statistical probability and also just the the fucking facts that there are people that are secular, non-believing, they're atheists, they might not see a higher order of things, they're tr- truly reductionist and scientific or just not caring about a spiritual part of life that are succeeding and manifesting their desires and they might even be finding fucking meaning, dude. It's like, the whole point of the Pisces energy is how you understand the beyond and also the shit that you don't understand too, which is so crazy. Really, Pisces, on some level, could talk about the astral level that envelops the whole entire world. And when you try to put these things in level layers of cosmology, some would be inclined to disagree, but at the same time, it's like, I'll wait for someone to disagree. I'm not going to really jump to that conclusion, even though I just did. And maybe that's my Pisces persecution fears from my South Node or some shit. I don't know. I think it's a little bit of both. The fact that, yeah, I've experienced that deja vu, but also... Since I'm explaining something esoteric, it's likely that somebody else doesn't see that shit the same way. And that's okay. But I would just really prefer somebody to tell me how they see it. Totally okay if you disagree. But that's the water plane, essentially, is what I mean after this long-ass discussion, digression. So, my whole original point and I want to focus on Jupiter in the sky because of this, guys, is that it is really what you make it. If I could share a secret with you, life has no fucking meaning apart from the meaning you give it. And if you can look at that knowledge like a tool, that should be highly empowering, highly liberating. The fact that you don't have to put so much pressure on yourself for bullshit. No pun intended, but we got the Taurus spirit here saying, man, life is good. And you got to really take time to appreciate it. Slow the fuck down. Not even kidding. I'm telling you guys, I believe I got sick because I needed to slow the fuck down. I rarely do get sick, man. But, um, you know, anytime you get ill, that's your body basically manifesting symptoms to show you to regulate your mind and emotions. So, living a good life is really what Jupiter and Taurus is about. This asks you to really expand the meaning of your value system. Like, what's important to you, fam? Is it money? You should say yes. Because money is the, like, yeah, I was going to say, like, because I care about you, fam, I'm not going to continue the example until you say, yes, I care about money. Because you're not going to manifest more money until you make it important. Yes, money is important. You can do a whole lot more with it. You can help a lot more people with it. You can serve the greater good way more with more money. And it's an infinite resource, so... Remember, it's important. You deserve to have as much of it as you want. But you can have, ultimately, multiple values. So, yeah, money is important to you. Family is important to you. What else? You know, free time is important to you. Relaxation is important to you. Make a mental note. Pay attention to what the fuck is important to you, fam. So you can make a space for it within your real life. That's what Taurus Jupiter is saying. By being honest about what you value... You can live a more fruitful and abundant life. And you can even share more with the world. Jupiter and Taurus is bringing abundance in for a lot of us. And I was showing you guys a month ahead that we're going to have Jupiter at about 15 degrees creeping into Uranus. There will be a conjunction this year. and This is going to really shake things up for a lot of us down to our core. So I really encourage you to get ready for increase now. 
gain is change that requires sacrifice. So remember that, gang, that you will have to let something go for your next level to come. Are you ready to bless other people with your abundance? Are you ready to inspire others with your wealth? Manage your money now. I'm talking plan out financially for your future starting today. Get it all organized so no matter how much money you have, your direction ensures that you are foolproof and unshakable. And study your ass off, man, because knowledge is the most priceless resource and you really can never lose it. Your intellectual property is yours forever. And that means a couple things, but if you're hearing at least one of those messages, man, you should get that golden ticket and use it. So, I just want you guys to know that once again, you need to start with the visualization. Recognize you can have whatever the fuck you want. And for some of you, I would really encourage you to go beyond what you think you can have. Expand your limits. And consider, if you can't do it for you, do it for someone else. Like, imagine yourself receiving more so others that know you can get comfortable with knowing that there's more out there for them. Think about it that way, man. We're not playing on scarcity mode anymore. We're playing on abundance timing, and that's really what the spirit of this is about. Because, you know, every year the sun will go through Pisces, but every year Jupiter will switch signs. So this is really the important thing to note about this Pisces season, my friends. This is all about the Taurus energy, meaning... You know, it's time for you to get rich. It's time for those that are rich in spirit to get rich financially. It's time for those broken spirit to really lose all their shit. Not trying to support the dualistic model of the universe any more than I have to, but at the same time, I'm trying to illustrate the point, my friends. You get what I'm saying? It's just saying that, like, your belief is really powerful and beyond what you believe. It, it really does say, what's what's the gift you're actually giving? What are your sacrifices amounting to? Because, you know, belief is one thing, but the genuine effort and sacrifice and work, that does mean a lot, too. And there's a whole Saturn conversation to be having right here, too, fan friend. So, And I really feel like a big message with this one is that, you know, the big picture, as we've been talking about, my friends, is we want to serve the greater good because why else would we be here? But if you don't consistently prioritize yourself, you may put yourself in a position where you interrupt your own growth and then therefore you start doing a, a disservice to everybody else and yourself. So you have to really take precautions to make sure you don't ever interrupt your growth. That's really what I'm seeing. Removing our obstacles as much as we can. There are big changes happening right now, man, and I want to illustrate the Pluto Aquarius energy. Because when it comes to Taurus, this will highlight our Venus and our, our Earth energy, really. So Venus is how we love. Let's start here. Damn. Damn. Yeah, I just went, like, I say damn because <laughs> for, like, who knows how long, at least 20 episodes or so, I've had a, a mental framework, and I'm like, okay, I'm deviating from it. Hey, that's okay. It's Pisces time. We can do this. Let's go swimming. <laughs> so, Venus, as we know, that's Mama Aphrodite. That's that's the goddess and how she glows. And, you know, Venus is in a very beautiful position right now. She's in between Mars and Pluto. And some of you clairvoyants are like, what the fuck is beautiful about that, bro? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> You're like, bro, that's some nasty shit. What are you fucking talking about? <laughs> I didn't know you were into that shit. It's okay. It's okay. So Venus in the uh, Aquarius. I mean, it's free love. That's what it means. I mean, this is an archetypal language of symbols. So what I also want to say about this 
is that wherever you experience love in your life, self, relationships, others, people, your value systems, your ideals, wherever you experience that love, my friend, that shit's about to accelerate. Accelerate. It's about to elevate. That's the whole point of Aquarius. Okay? That's the simple message for you to hear when it comes to Venus in Aquarius. So Jupiter and Taurus is expanding our stability, our comfort, our need to be nourished. And then you'll see this Venus in Aquarius play out a couple different ways for multitudes of people. Maybe all of the above or none of the above. But it's like, you know, one way I see this playing out with Venus Aquarius is getting more social, more friendly, more interactive with the world. And that's cool. Another way I see this is that, uh, you know, that may be the exact opposite. On the contrary, you may be spending and allocating way more of that time for yourself. Either way is cool. But the point is the love nature is elevating. And this says that we might be prioritizing more of a mental connection when it comes to our relationships. To be more aligned on ideals, more on vision, values, etc. Things like that. You know, a need for freedom. Like I said, free love. A need for freedom not to be restricted or... or held down and I mean dude if I'm being honest if I'm gonna keep it G real with you homie it's gonna be about three hours if we want to really explain how deep and twisted the Venus Pluto cycle can get so I just want to say as a general blanket statement to the audience you know leave that nasty shit alone <laughs> Within reason. No, just leave it alone, fam. Leave it alone in general. You know what I'm talking about. Leave that shit the fuck alone. Some people don't know what the fuck I'm talking about in good. But just leave that shit alone. I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. But I just felt the need to say that shit. So, you know. Venus, Pluto. You can watch this cycle start and begin and and wax, wane, culminate, etc. This is, uh. This is your deepest, darkest, most twisted fantasies. Is that the name of his album? (laughs) I'm pretty sure it was. But uh, on a lighter note, (laughs) on a lighter note, uh, Venus and Mars are making their conjunction junction. What's the function? And that's that's way better, man. Because Venus and Mars coming together at this week and they're going to be traveling conjunct all week, my friends. And what's even more important to note about this conjunction is that this conjunction is going to be making a square to Jupiter all week. So Jupiter, Venus, and Mars are going to be going hard this week. And it's really about, like, I feel squares a lot of times makes this squeezing action. It's like, yeah, and then we've got what? Jupiter going, who expanding on one side. And then Venus and Mars are like doing X-rated things, basically. X Games mode, you know? (laughs) Venus is the lover, and then Mars is like the fighter. You get me? It's the masculine and the feminine. Mars is our drive. It's our ambitions. And it's it's also a great time. Always a great time. Mostly a great time (laughs) when these come together in the sky. It's usually a great time when these come together in the sky. Because the way that we value things and the way that our passions work they're the same thing, you know, and this is highly magnetic, it's charming, it's enjoyable, it's sensual, it's pleasurable, it's fun, it's free, I mean, this is romantic as fuck, if you really think about it, so if, if, I mean, again, as a mundane astrology report, this was your metaphysical weather forecast. If you were single as fuck, this probably feels like you're probably not going to be for too long. You're probably going to welcome that shit into your heart because you imagined it right now. And then the universe said, ah, they snapped the picture. They're like, got you. It got your ass. I fucking got you. I saw you wanted that. You mad. You wanted it enough to imagine it, bitch. Ha, I'm sending it to you. Law of attraction. Ha, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> And you're going to like it, too. Uh, (laughs) 
bro, I'm seeing it on this side, bro. Some of y'all are fucked. Like, you're literally going to have to get what you want. And you got tricked into it. <laughs> And it was this video that fucking did it. It was this fucking uh, digital magic. <laughs> good luck, man. You're gonna have a good time. <laughs> yeah, luck. Luck is um gonna bless a lot of people this week, man. <laughs> Let me tell you, big changes are coming. Financial prosperity, because beyond the love the shit that we're talking, let me not go there. This love stuff. Because let's not forget, love is the whole fucking reason we're here, allegedly. Uh, beyond the love thing, Venus is really about money and how we survive and our needs. And Mars is pointing to our needs right now. And then this square to Jupiter is really saying, what's the best, like, meaningful, best way? Y'all better get fucking rich, man. <laughs> like, make a focus on getting more money, new income streams. You know, prioritizing, saving, and investing your money long-term strategy get fucking rich you know you can get rich slow or you can get rich quick you know i'd encourage you to do it by any means possible you can help so much more people in yourself and there's never been a shortage of money just ideas so get fucking rich man that's what i'm really seeing let's go back to mercury because there's two things i really want to show you this week the whole point was to focus on Neptune, focus on Jupiter, because that's how Pisces works. But uh, my two points is that we got some action coming in Friday. We got some action coming in Saturday. So on Friday, the planet Mercury is going to move from uh, Aquarius to Pisces. And Aquarius is all about how we, th- I'm sorry, Mercury is all about how we think, how we speak, how we analyze, how we process our information. Aquarius is really analytical and factual and and logical and honest at its best. Scientific, too. You know, it's that Uranus energy that we've been talking about for hell. It's got the other planets there. So the mind has been thinking real good lately, hasn't it, right? Been thinking real smart, thinking real sharp, deducing real brain-like. Oh, fuck yes. So good. It's so good how we think. So good really so good okay so um mercury and pisces not so much man brain don't think so good right now (laughs) because you know you put the planet of logic and squares into the sign of the fish and he's like what the fuck do i do man it's all these fucking fish right here man so i mean though this is good if you really think about it um mercury and pisces is responsible for a lot of profound insight, you know, a real Mercury Jupiter in the house saying when it comes to, uh, oh man, when it comes to Friday, our whole perception is going to change. The lens that God lets you look through life through is going to be different. You're going to wake up with the iridescent glasses. You're like, are these rose colored? Nah, they're like green, depending on how I look. like, whoa, now it's red. Oh my goodness you start to realize the way that you look through the glasses is changing the way the glasses look. Holy fucking shit. So, pay attention. Pay the fuck attention. Because you're going to get what you pay for. And I really hope you guys got the gem because if you control your perspective, you're free. Some of y'all need to really pick up on the importance of symbols so you can direct energy because anything outside of you is for your use and so is your perspective. So if you can program your perspective and how that interacts with the environment, you can have external leverage everywhere. Are you fucking shitting me? Write that down. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You gonna make that work. We're focusing on healing this week. So Friday, things are going to get a little bit more wonky. And I will say that you're going to have some intuitive insights in the Mercury Pisces season. You're going to have some downloads. You're going to make some profound clarity. 
You're going to really have a deeper connection with self and the universe, and you'll receive downloads as far as your mission and how you're supposed to carry out the next level of your plans. Be open to receive from spirit the next level of your plans. And I really want you to say out loud, spirit, I'm open and I'm ready to receive the next level of my life. Just say that shit out loud. The universe will hear it and receive it. And then boom, man, that interaction has started. Our focus right now is healing, my friends. We got some interesting in conjunctions to Chiron in the North Node. And it's really about focusing on motherfucking healing. Diving deeper into the self. Taking more accountability for self. Having more awareness for self. Giving more love to self. With this Aries energy. Forgiveness for self. Forgiveness for others. Learning how to handle our passion and our anger and aggression better is really a big thing. And if we don't have something to serve, man, you can't serve two masters, first of all. But if you have nothing to serve, fam, it's like, how are you going to have a direction to put all this passion in? So I really encourage whoever needs this message to take that time this month to just soul search and uh, connect to yourself and seriously just meditate every day. Let that be your lifestyle and keep connecting with yourself because that's where the information comes from. Okay. We got a full moon coming this week, and that's really the most important thing I want to highlight, even though it's been a pretty powerful discussion already, is that on Saturday, the full moon is going to hit the sign of Virgo. I mean, it is already hitting right here. Let me go back a couple hours. Full moon in Virgo. And the full moon is the culmination of the lunar cycle, so we're going to see a cycle of release begin for the next two weeks as the moon wanes and hits the new cycle in the sign of Pisces, so... You see right here in the chart, we got the sun and the moon making their opposition. And this just really means that there's going to be a shedding when it comes to this part of our life, the Virgo part. Virgo is quite a few things, man. This is going to say paramount and first and foremost, connection with our body needs to be highlighted. And we need to pay attention to our physical health. Our temple is all we really have. So... Are you serving your body the same way you want to serve the world? That's the question that I think we all need to take an honest answer with. I mean, I say this with a congested nose. I say this with X milligrams of acetaminophen in my blood. I, I'm telling you, man, <laughs> this is, I think this is what the stars are telling us. I think we're on to something. Oh, shit. <laughs> So, uh, beyond the health, which is always going to follow, there's no going beyond that shit, if you really think about it. But if we want to get more in-depth, man, this kind of talks about the work you do, the job you're doing. Like, is there a better way for you to serve? Do you need to get, you need to quit that bum-ass job? Are you tired of that bitch-ass work that you're doing that doesn't really seem to contribute to the work that you're doing in the grand scheme of things? That might not be for everybody who I'm talking to, but if it does hit your heart, I just want to say, man, it's like it's not a wasted time. This is a stepping stone for where your journey takes you. So it just depends. If you if you are in the place where you're like, hey, man, I'm working harder on my job than I am on my purpose, my self-improvement, you're at the diminishing returns point, fam. So it'd actually be way better for you in the world for you to fire yourself even take a pay cut if you had to, to free up your fucking energy so you could really serve your purpose and then expand more. And then you'd make more fucking money in the long run because ultimately it's not even about the money, man. As Jupiter Taurus says, it's about the energy. It's about the meaning. So if we're if we're selling out, so to speak, dude, like that's not going to really cut it in the long term when it comes to freedom, longevity, and independence. You'll get security. You know, you'll get the short-term immediate gratification, but if you're looking for the long-term independence, significance, or independence, I don't know if I said that twice. Sometimes I'd be doing that shit. I wouldn't doubt it now. If you're looking for that, man, you may need to um, expand, basically. Don't limit yourself to a vehicle that you've outgrown, is my point. Give yourself permission to keep growing. And I also feel, for some people, 
devoting energy and time to charity be really important in this cycle, in this season, just to make it a principle for our life, you know, a principle for how we manage our time, our money, our energy, like we talked about earlier, having a rigid financial plan and structure so you don't fuck up. Like, how much are we donating to charity? I don't say that as like a challenge. I say that just to get you to think about what number you can do so you can formulate your plan and you can really just make it your lifestyle and then you don't have to fucking think about it. It's real Virgo energy. It's all about systems and structures. If you guys are hearing this point of the conversation, I would really encourage you guys to listen to the book by T. Harv Ecker. The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind and study this book. See what it does for you. How you can adjust your thinking and belief system and not only just manifest more money, but manage it better too. Live a more fruitful life. Like I said, study any book you can find. Study my book. Simplified Astrology is fucking free. So, the full moon in Virgo kind of feels like what's my place in the world and what's the best way for me to help other people and really... When it comes to the Chiron energy, some people, myself included, would say that Chiron is the ruling planet of Virgo. So, like, quite literally, as I'm feeling into this energy psychically, this is the fucking call to be on your purpose, man. Beyond the money, beyond the financial resources, man. It's about the intention. It's about why we're here. The world is teaching us to heal through our intentions right now. And it starts with self-image. It starts with awareness. It starts with accountability. And I hope this message is sexy with Mars conjunct Venus. I hope that you lust over accountability. I hope that you feel your toes curl at the thought of responsibility. Oh, fuck. (laughs) I hope that this message has uplifted you. And inspired you to reach beyond the foundation that you've established. To build a bigger one. To manifest more. To inspire others. To lead. Go find some tools is really what I take from Chiron. I want to say find some tools, my friends. I can't speak to everybody who's listening because I got a lot of viewers. And I love and appreciate every one of you. I can't speak to where you're going specifically, you know in your life, but I just encourage you, find out where your tools are, use your resources, and and go immediately to the heart of the fucking problem. If you are a spiritualist, if that is your calling, if you are an astrologer, a reader, a tarot reader, a diviner, a psychic, and you're looking to go beyond, hit the link in my bio and go join Simplified Astrology and or Simplified Tarot, and you will thank yourself later. Because there's the tools for you. Fuck with your boy. So after Saturday, we're going to start that waning moon phase and cycle into this release. So really, I would just encourage you guys, if you're going to do some magical workings come Saturday or anything like that, you know, let your will be the judge. If you are, if you're going to do magical workings, the first and only thing I need to say is salute to you. Go hard. But uh, if you, if you wanted my advice, If you wanted me to tell you what you could do, if I was you, I would say this energy that I'm feeling here, this is like the ultimate time to, to open up sacred space. You know, you could light some white candles for the full moon. You know, you could do like a salt cauldron and that's really powerful. If you guys never tried this really great way to cleanse, you can literally take um, a fireproof container, like a cauldron. It's gotta be fireproof. You could do cast iron, disperse the heat well. Put some Epsom salt or some rock salt. Salt absorbs negative energy. You put um, isopropyl alcohol. Do 91 or higher. I don't know if they make higher than 91, but not uh, the good shit. (laughs) Put that in the salt. Soak the salt in the alcohol. And then just move the bottle away, far away. And then light the cauldron with a lighter or a match. And basically the alcohol will burn off of the salt. And you can watch videos about this too. Do it in a fireproof container, well-ventilated. Make sure you're safe. Make sure it disperses heat well. Make sure there's not a whole bunch of fucking shit around before you do it, you know? 
But uh, this can be a great way to cleanse your space, banish negative energy. So that's good to look into. You know, you could open up sacred space. But uh, after that, this is my point. After you open up sacred space, light your incense, candles, whatever you want to do, you can um, and take a bath too. Fuck yeah, take a bath. But also, uh, the point, be open and ask, ask spirit and be open to receive information about your true calling, your true vocation, my true job. What business do I want to be in? What business do I start? How do I make a fuck ton of money? You know, be open to receive these ideas and put them into action. I'm telling you guys, this is the best time to figure out how to serve the greater good while you get a piece of the pie as well. Create abundance for other people, man, and you will delight yourself in the party. And that's pretty beautiful. That's as far as it goes, man. Jupiter is the focus. So if I was you and I wanted a task, I would find my natal Jupiter configuration and figure out what the fuck that means. Because for a lot of you guys who have Jupiter in your chart and you have Pluto and Sagittarius, you need to understand your Jupiter because it's guiding your evolution. So simplified astrology link is in the bio. I hope you guys liked this video and this style of doing the content. Things are always changing, man. So you'll see me soon. You'll see me once again. I hope you enjoyed this one. The only thing I want to say that I didn't say yet off my notes is just pay attention to the fact that this full moon is opposite Saturn. And that says something about our true responsibilities, our calling, and even our karma. So it is worth taking the time to talk to the void and literally listen to the void. Like, please, for the love of God, y'all, listen to the void. Because the void is listening to you. And some of y'all act like you're afraid of silence or some shit. So, like, I gotta clear this shit out. You're gonna have to sit the fuck still and be careful about noise pollution. Because if you give yourself no time, no space to think, how are you going to create anything? You get me? So, you got to hear the call of your spirit guides. You got to hear the call of your ancestors. You got to hear the call of the goddess, the God, the great spirit, the higher self. You have to listen. If you're listening to me right now, I want to thank you so much. I love you. I appreciate you for taking the time. May you be blessed. May you manifest all that you desire in this lifetime. And take the collective vibration higher. So mote it be. See you guys in the next one. Blessings.